Hello and welcome to the series on raising meat birds. I'm raising these birds as a part of feeding my household and this is not for commercial purposes, this is just purely for subsistence. The ideas and the methods I use will be shown in this video. And I hope you do enjoy this video. So here they are. These are 8 broiler chicks that we got roughly 24 hours ago. As you can see, we have them here in basically a half of a 55 gallon barrel, a makeshift cover just to keep any pests out or any cats or any other pesky critters. And here we have them. These are the chicks. We have our PVC feeder for them. They have the water here. As you basically on newspapers, we try to keep the bedding like the shavings and so on to minimum because we don't want them to eat it and for them to get any sort of digestive problems. They all seem to be doing well. They're alert, they're active, they're seeking out the food, they're drinking. They are interacting with each other well, so we are looking forward to the next few weeks of keeping them, raising them to adult food and um, slaughter each. That's about it. So it's a nice bright early morning, week one, bit of a cold morning. I had to put um, some newspapers to cover the drum that we have the chicks in because a lot of drafts will get into them. I'm just gonna lift it aside and show you guys what's going on here. And here they are. So we have them feeding here, we replace the PVC feeder and we put this stoveboard feeder that we have. I'm not really a fan of these but the appetite really opened up in the past few days. So we have to give them something with a greater capacity. We also replace the water dish because they were drinking out a lot of the water during the course of the day came back after a couple hours and you'd find the thing dry but they're settling in nicely or I should say they have settled in nicely you could see some of the feathers on their wings are growing out the appetite is opened up there they're eating constantly we just have to keep monitoring them because a couple of them ever so often will pick at the sawdust or pick at the wood shavings I should say at the bottom of the barrel we change the newspaper and the shavings once a day so that it doesn't get too bad for them so it's the morning of week two and the chicks actually outgrew that 55 gallon well half a 55 gallon barrel so we have them in the bottom section of a four well an old 400 gallon water tank that we had and it just um, got too old for us but we just cut it up and we're using it as planters so we repurposed it we put a very large panel of this um, mesh on the top suspended water and food inside of there we like to keep them warm take a look at the video inside they're very active you see they're taking on that traditional broiler shape that meaty shape The 
shave line the bottom of the tank with newspapers. Still keeping the shavings, the wood shavings to a minimum to avoid them ingesting it. They've adjusted well so far to the changes. Ravenous appetite as normal. We've also done something different. I'll show you what I mean. So this is also what we have done. This is also a section of that 400 gallon water tank that we cut up. We have the same mesh on top and we have started to introduce them to being out in the yard getting them accustomed to free ranging we put a, some fruit for them to eat we have water and the other um, essentials for them but they usually spend the entire day out here in the yard getting accustomed to walking around in the grass foraging and we also wanted to minimize having them to sit in their own waste on some newspapers or some soggy bit of um, wood shavings so we could always move this water tank around every couple of days well this piece of water tank around every couple of days to a fresh patch of grass so that will get them accustomed to ranging on the yard so this is week three and Let's take a look at the birds. That's right, you're seeing them starting to develop some feathers there. They're starting to get feathered out. They're putting on a lot of size now. At just three weeks, look at that. One thing I forgot to mention in weeks one and two was that we were feeding them starter feed. Roughly about 10 pounds of starter feed we bought for them initially and they plow through that like whoa so we started to mix the growing feed the growing mash with the starter and transition them over to it and so far they are responding very well to it they're putting on a lot of size they're transitioning into their adult plumage their behavior is typically what you would expect in chickens on the whole. Here's the hotter part of the day. You see them taking a rest. They're not really as active as layer birds as, as expected. They are a lot meatier, so they tend to be a lot less enthusiastic in trying to move around. But so far, so good. So here we are in the tropics and the average daytime temperatures in Trinidad and Tobago vary from 31 to 36 degrees centigrade and that is a critical thing to know because it affects the health of your birds especially when you're raising broiler birds or meat birds. What we're looking at here is the makeshift um, pen that we're going to keep them in for the rest of their natural lives with us before slaughter it's an IBC cage you see that there is the wooden base that came with it that's it right here it's sitting down on some bricks on the lawn there's a wooden box that we have attached to this base and just slip the cage over the box and it contains wood shavings as a deep litter bed roughly two to three inches deep so as the birds are in here they remain during the course of the day out in the yard ranging but they sleep inside of the cage so here we are in the shade of this mango tree it's a very hot day a very hot day and we see that we have made here this sort of makeshift shade system with a piece of construction plastic 
to shade this section of water tank piece of the plastic galvanized on top there on top of the birds and I want to talk a little bit about heat stress because heat stress is something that is very um, important to know about especially in meat birds they are a lot more sensitive to heat and ambient temperature than regular laying birds or common fowl because of their larger body mass they aren't able to lose the heat as a result of their metabolic processes as readily as the common birds or the layer birds and as such you see them here perched they look a little bit lethargic but they're really and truly just trying to take a rest and cope with all the heat that you're giving them and the thing is this even though that they are in the shade they are still susceptible to heat stress so this is something that is very critical in knowing and caring for broiler birds or meat birds especially in the tropics so in order to address this we adjust the times of the day in which we feed them so usually that will be shifted to early in the morning and very late in the evening and avoiding the hot part of the day so that they won't overheat during the day and locating their coop in a windward location and providing an ample amount of water for them to consume. This ends part one of my experience with keeping backyard broiler birds. Stay tuned for part two.